Hello, I'm Zach Smith, the Reminiscing Rocketeer, and on this episode of What If, we're going to look at the Space Shuttle, or the history of the development of the Space Shuttle and how very easily it could have gone in a very different direction. You all know the Space Shuttle, you may or may not love it, that's debatable. Certainly to many, it seems, the space shuttle seems like it would make sense, right? In this era of reusable rockets, a lot of people question, do genuinely question, why wasn't a version 2.0 even considered or, or built? The thing, though, is, is reusability is not a new concept. In fact, NASA was interested in reusability pretty much from day one. Even the uh, original designs for the Saturn I rocket uh, included um, and a regalo wing where it would be deployed and it would glide down for a soft landing so that it could be recovered and reused. All the engines, including even the F1, could be reused multiple times You know, if they didn't crash back down into the ocean and were destroyed. But again, it was a space race. And in a space race, things that take time are not your friend and the developing reusability and things were going to take a lot of development and engineering time that NASA just didn't feel they had. NASA also enjoyed, a, at that time, a blank checkbook. Basically, Congress was just, here you go, just throwing money at them. So when you have a blank checkbook and a time crunch, well, expendability makes sense. It's the way to go. So reusability just went out the window. But... That was a, actually the original thinking of NASA. As we got into the late 60s and the Apollo program was starting to see its end, well, reality kind of set in and NASA quickly realized that they were going to have to start living actually within a budget. That meant revisiting reusability, including the space shuttle was conceived. But would it surprise you to know that this version of the space shuttle was not what was originally wanted. NASA actually kind of wanted something that looked more like this. The space shuttle history is an excellent case study in design by committee, engineering to a budget, and just general politics of the early 1970s. It's really quite fascinating how we actually wound up with the design that we got basically all started uh, with Thomas Paine, newly minted uh, NASA administrator um, under the Nixon administration, kind of a holdover from Johnson, but Nixon didn't really care that much. So he managed to talk Nixon into forming a new group called the STG or the Space Task Group. Their job was to come up with a plan as to what are we going to do with the space program post Apollo. Paine wanted to go full 2001. He wanted space stations and nuclear powered rockets and moon bases and Mars. The whole He wanted the whole thing. Kind of naive and tone deaf given the pretty strong signals Nixon had been sending and the general mood and attitude of Congress, but Payne genuinely believed that the success of Apollo 11 would get the American public so fired up about space that he'd be able to have the political capital to sell the plan. And the plan was the integrated plan. The integrated plan featured everything. Um, his dream scenario. And he even managed to convince Spiro Agnew, the vice president at the time, on the plan. He bought it hook, line, and sinker. And that was what they presented to Nixon. And naturally, I'm Nixon didn't give a reply. I probably tend to think Nixon probably questioned their sanity. Nixon very quietly rejected it a few months later, and shortly after that, actually, Payne announced his planned resignation for later in 1970. The space shuttle, which was only a small part of the actual overall integrated plan, continued to move forward. Development was going to be constrained by a number of factors, the biggest which is Nixon's budget office wanted a put two types of caps on the development of the program one an overall cost and two the maximum amount you could spend during an actual year so you had an annual max cap and then an overall program cap which started influencing design decisions so ultimately this boiled down to two competing designs 
Uh, you had Saturn Shuttle, which was basically a space shell that was going to use an external tank like we have, except it was going to be launched on top of a Saturn, at least the first stage of a Saturn V rocket. Um, this would take advantage of the already existing personnel technology and the billions of dollars that had already been, billions of dollars in 1960s dollars, by the way, uh, in Saturn rocket technology. Maybe retain super heavy lift capability for the future. The other competing design was TAUS, or Thrust Assisted Orbital Shuttle, which is the design we wound up going with. Basically, you had two SRBs, solid rocket boosters, attached to the external fuel tank. The biggest difference between these two designs in regards to the shuttle itself is with TAUS, the space shuttle main engines kick on at blast off, like, you know, two, three, one, zero. The main engines kick on, the SRBs kick on, and you launch. Whereas with Saturn shuttle, the shuttle engines wouldn't kick on until after stage separation while you were already high up in the atmosphere. With Saturn shuttle, it was going to, the first stage was going to be basically a giant airplane. It was actually going to full, like, launch, stage separation, the shuttle engines would kick on and take that into orbit, while the first stage of this giant winged Saturn rocket would fly back to the Cape and land. Uh, basically, it would have been the largest aircraft in the world, specifically designed for launching the shuttle. It would have been massive. So you basically had two aircraft that you were going to have to design. Not just the the orbiter, but the launcher. Whereas with Taos, you just had to develop the orbiter. And they already were very familiar with solid rocket booster technology. Uh, unfortunately, they couldn't get the budget office to budge. The Saturn shuttle development was going to cost more dollars in total program costs estimated than the Taos method. With anticipation of cost overruns probably being significantly more than that. And we're talking early 1970s dollars, so that would today translate into billions of dollars, you know, a la SLS. The other problem was is that because you would be developing these two things simultaneously, because NASA wanted to avoid phase development, phase development being where you developed one and then, then the other, to avoid that annual spending cap, problem is, is then you'd have one vehicle just sitting around collecting dust while you built and developed the other. And of course, then there's no guarantee that maybe Congress doesn't change their mind and, you know, pull the money. So they really didn't want to, they wanted to avoid that. And the Saturn shuttle definitely ran hard into that, that during uh, peak funding, it was definitely going to go over that annual spending cap. So Taos simply became a fait accompli. It kept under the program budget, the annual spending budget. What NASA wanted was a fully reusable rocket with affordable launch costs. And unfortunately, because of the budget and having to engineer to the development cap, they wound up with a rocket that wasn't that reusable with substantially higher launch costs. So kind of defeated the whole purpose. But what if Saturn shuttle had won? In order for that to happen, they probably would have needed another at least half a billion to a billion more dollars in overall program. And they would have needed uh, Nixon's budget office to be a little more flexible. Could they have gotten it? Assuming that Nixon had been okay with that or they got an OMB on board, okay. This would have radically, profoundly, and probably in an incalculable way, have altered our entire space history of the last... 40 years plus. I mean, certainly probably not during the 1970s. The 1970s probably would have pretty much gone the way they did. Maybe you would have saved Skylab or you would have had Skylab B because you would have needed to have retained uh, all those people with uh, having to do with Saturn launch capabilities. What better way to do that than to continue to launch Saturn rockets? At the same time, whether or not that, that would have been available in the budget is pretty dubious at best, but maybe. The biggest impact would have been, would have come in the 80s. During the 1980s, the Reagan administration 
talked big about going into space, but um, I don't know how serious Reagan was, but he talked big about it, wanting to have a space station that could compete with the Soviets. Again, I think costs became a big, you know, were big concern. I mean, even though, yes, the space shuttle was designed to build a space station, the assumption had been that, you know, they would have already had a space station in orbit, that they would have had Skylab already there for them to go to and just build off of that. And by the time you get to the Bush administration is where this really would have seen its biggest impact. Uh, again, 70s probably goes down the same, 80s probably not a whole lot different depending on how serious Reagan was. But we know George H.W. Bush presented a very ambitious going back to the moon plan. He wanted to go back and was prepared to back it in a big way. Um, problem is Congress wasn't. And the cost of having to build a new moon rocket, mm, that was too rich for their blood and they weren't gonna have it. So the plan died fairly quickly. But if you already had super heavy lift capability, basically stock on the shelf that you were already using, you take away a huge major cost factor. Bush's moon plan may have gotten actually off the ground and going. Certainly, it would have been interesting to think about moon landings in the mid to late 1990s. Hey, wait a minute. Moon landings during a troubled and embattled presidency. This sounds familiar. Anyway, that very well could have had moon landings during the, the late 1990s. Instead of a constellation program presented by the next administration, um, that could have been a commitment to a moon base. Uh, we could be living in a world right now where there's a, a dozen or a couple dozen or maybe even a hundred or more people living on the moon full time. And instead of talking about going back to the moon now, we could be talking about a Mars mission. Maybe we already been to Mars and we're talking about going back, or certainly a conversation about building a permanent habitation there, maybe. Very different conversation when, you know, if we had spent the last 20 to 30 years with super heavy lift rocket capability, all of these other plans and ideas that got shot down because developing a new heavy lift rocket was astronomically expensive, that goes away. Certainly no SLS. Don't need it. We've already, you know, got one. Um, thank you. Uh, space shuttle's actually probably still flying. You don't have the Challenger accident. So let's say you wouldn't have had an accident. You just wouldn't have had a Challenger-style accident. Again, it was the SRBs that failed that caused that failure. I mean, that doesn't stop a Columbia accident or, you know, ice or foam from coming off the external tank and striking the shuttle. But you don't have that failure mode from the SRBs. In fact, actually, that was one of the selling points those who were promoting uh, Saturn shuttle actually predicted. They predicted that would more or less happen. SpaceX probably never exists. You just wouldn't. I mean, Elon has stated many times that uh, it kind of wound up coming into existence because he wanted to go to Mars or wanted to inspire people to go to Mars. We already have super heavy lift capability. We're going back to the moon in the 1990s, talking about continuing the going to the moon and building a permanent moon base there. Mars just would have come out of as a natural extension. Whether or not even Blue Origin would have existed, who knows? A, if you're living in an era where you have reusable rockets, or at least a reusable rocket system, do you still need reusable rockets? I, again, NASA's not a commercial entity and got out of the commercial launch business completely after the Challenger disaster, so obviously their development tracks would have been very, very different. And who knows, maybe I'd even be having this conversation with people from the moon, right, from my apartment, uh, you know, at, at Lake Armstrong from the Sea of Tranquility, uh, talking about, oh, what if, what if, what, how lame our life would have been uh, had uh, Nixon not funded Saturn shuttle, right? If they had gone with Taos instead of we'd been stuck in low Earth orbit. Who knows? All kinds of interesting possibilities. Love to hear your uh, comments and thoughts. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. I'm Zach Smith, Reminiscing Rocketeer. Catch you on the flip side.